In today's video, I wanted to explore one of the largest Iron Jaws war clans there is, and those are the Iron Sons. And I'll be honest, I had no idea how incredibly interesting this lore was until I really dove in. Because if you remember in the old Iron Jaws battle tome, most of the war clans, right, they were just kind of blurbs with paint schemes, right? This is before they really started doing like sub factions and that kind of stuff. And so there wasn't a whole lot there. I mean, this was Iron Jaws were mentioned, of course, as kind of the, uh, the studio scheme, if you will. It's that bold yellow. Uh, but realistically, I feel like there wasn't nearly as much life into the sub factions until later on, you know, when they started really leaning into those with storm hosts and stuff like that. And so I glossed over it and didn't give it its due time. Now that the Orc War Clan book has given real life to those sub factions, it's been a blast to really dig into them because no other Iron Jaws specific war clan is as big and mighty as the Iron Sons. And um, that's just not necessarily like a boastful claim. They're actually one of the largest single Iron Jaws war clans in the realm, and every realm except Azir has felt their touch at some point. And so in this video, we're going to dive into the Iron Sons, their origin, and the epic tale of their leader who really defines this kind of sub-faction. This is like a, uh, I use the term cult of personality sometimes, right? You get a lot with like Chaos War bands where it's all centered around this one Chaos Lord's epic quest. This is a very similar thing where other war bands and, and, and tribes are like the Bone Splitters because they're all in the same book. Um, maybe have like you know, temperaments based on like, oh, this is just what we like to do, right? They organize themselves by how they like to fight or something like that. This is really the story of one Iron Jaw orc, right? And how he kind of took command and defined the, the kind of culture, if you will, the culture, if you will, of the, um, of the Iron Jaws below him. And so we're going to cover all of that. There are no specific models uh, to this. Like I said, the, the War Clan is so big that it can have everything. And so I'm not going to be showing specific stuff, just artwork. So just sit back, grab your paintbrush, and relax. Led by the deeply cunning Drakbad Grot Kicker, the Iron Sons are the flashiest of the Auric War Clans. And that's why they paint their armor this bold yellow, right? And if you don't know, uh, if you haven't seen the Iron Jaws army, they really are kind of the quote unquote poster boy. This is the studio scheme generally, the yellow bold armor. The War Clan began in Gur, Realm of Beasts, but has since migrated to just about everywhere. And as it goes, it's growing in size, taking in Oryx they find along the way. They'll come in, they'll start as Ard Boys, and then it'll kind of like grow over time as they fight more into Brutes and kind of raise through the ranks. Now, the really defining feature of this War Clan is the tale of Drakbad, his ascension to the rank of Megaboss. At one point, Drakbad was just another brute fighting amongst the Gurish war clans, but he quickly became known for an unusual habit. You see, he would wade in amongst the weaker grots that were fighting with them, right? These little lesser greenskins that were around, and he'd kick them in all directions, flinging them at the enemy. Again, his name is Grot Kicker, that's his last name. And over time, he began to grow, as all Oryx do, with more battle and more rage and that kind of stuff. And he moved from kicking grots to kicking Ard Boys. So he's just like hurling these things at the enemy. In addition to this weird habit of using lesser greenskins as a meat shield, oftentimes he would hold back from the main charge and hit enemies from a flank, which stuck out to everyone around him because it's a very un orky thing to do, right? They want to charge in, screaming, none of this flank and shield wall stuff. Like, what's he doing over there? Um, a true orc would just run straight at the enemy, but he's kind of holding back. He's kind of playing some kind of game. The leader of the clan that he was a part of, it wasn't the Iron Sun necessarily at that point, became wise to this and uh, kind of came to a head. The, the clan was taking down a particularly large Gargant and Drakbad, of course, held back when everyone else was fighting first. He came in on a flank and he delivered the kill shot, he cut the head of the Gargant off. The current mega boss, Gutruck Four Fist, called Drakbad a coward and challenged him to lead the next hunt if he wanted to redeem himself. And I, I think I get the sense that it was supposed to be like, you're, you know, he, the intention was Drakbad would be so insulted that he would fight and Gutruck would have a reason to like kill him. If nothing else, at least to have a good fight. But Drakbad agreed and said, okay, we'll deal with this. And he already had a plan in mind. So the next day, it's time for this big hunt that Drakbad's supposed to lead. 
Drakbat himself had already seen a set of tracks of a huge maw crusher. They moved alongside the giants, and so, uh, you know, the giant they just slayed, of course. So he deduced that the Gargant must have kept the Maw Crusher as a pet. And so Drakbad led the charge, running fast and wild as his mega boss tried to keep up. He's like, okay, I'm leading the hunt. Let's go, let's go, let's go. He gets everyone's all whipped up into a frenzy, and they take off. After some time, they arrived at the Gargant's cave, and sure enough, Inside, there was a colossal Maw Crusher. The Oryx let out a, le- a yell and it charged in, and Drakbad kind of just very subtly fell back a bit, just a, just a hair. The Maw Crusher there pursuing response with an ear-bursting bellow, so loud that it like addled the minds of the attacking Oryx and stunned them. And in their moment of weakness, this Maw Crusher lunged at them and took the head of Gut Druck for Fist clean off. So now technically in the middle of the fight, they have no Mega Boss. Now while all of this is happening, Drakbad sees his chance. See, he was a clever one. He knew the Gargan must have had a way of shielding himself from his pet's roar, right? Again, he, he understood this Gargan has a pet, it seems to be a Maw Crusher, there has to be a way that he's not getting killed by it by its screaming. So late the night before, Drakpad went to the severed head of the Gargant and pulled out some earwax and jammed it into his own ear, which is so gross, I love it so much. So while all the other big orcs ran forward and got stunned by this scream, the mega boss was just straight dead. Drakbag then uses the corpse of his fallen leader as like a stepping stool, leaps up, because he's the only one who's not stunned, jumps on the back of the Maw Crusher, bellows in its ear, and the beast yields. In one fell swoop, right, this quick action, Drakbat has taken out his rival, and asserted himself as Mega Boss and gained the power of a huge Maw Crusher who becomes known as Boss Biter. Of course, that's a great name seeing as how he just took out the clan's Mega Boss. And everyone is just kind of standing around in awe, right? And Drakbad made it painfully clear that he was in charge. And since that day, he's been the Mega Boss of the Iron Sons. And so what that shows, this, this is a great kind of um, glimpse into this Warwick's life, right? He has been fighting a certain way, his clan kind of turned against him, but this plan is actually incredibly complex, right? It's a lot of, there's a lot of logic in it when it comes to, uh, for, at least especially for an orc is what I'm trying to say, where, you know, he fought intelligently, getting the kill shot on the Gargant, and then was able to deduce that he has a pet, and therefore he must have a way of surviving it, and it kind of set up this plan to remove his rival and assert himself as a leader. I just thought that was a really clever thing, but it's not like one of those like hyper intelligent plans. Like you, you can like just look around and kind of gain the clues, but it doesn't require like finesse or anything like that. And I thought that was really interesting. And the key element of this, and the reason why I think the, the lore spends so much time talking about Drakbat specifically is because like his character defines the Iron Jaws, right? This is a war clan renowned for its cunning. Uh, that kind of like sinister intelligence, that kind of like you get what you want kind of thing, right? They think more than other orcs. That's not to say that they're any less deadly in combat, but they conduct themselves as very different combatants because the most dangerous orc there is is one that thinks a little bit, right? When they're just muscle, they're dumb brutes, but if you kind of come up with even the most basic plan, which is what he did, that becomes incredibly dangerous. Adding complex maneuvers, such as deadly melee presence, to that kind of cunning only makes them worse. Because now you have flanking troops and, um, you know, defense lines and meat shields and that kind of stuff that he's considering in his mind makes him very dangerous. And so Drakbat is in charge, thinking deeply. He surrounds himself with several mega bosses who are chosen specifically for their cunning, right? Getting into those positions through manipulation and tricks and plans and that kind of stuff rather than necessarily being the strongest although honestly if you're going to be a mega boss you've been around long enough that you are also strong and because of all of that they have grown into becoming a massive war clan like i said one of the largest out there and drakbat is often considered one of the few orcs who comes close to the power of gordrak himself he still bows to gordrak he gordrak is number one but if you had to pick a number two it would be Drakbat, because he has the intelligence and the charisma to bind war clans together and grow. Which, again, the ability to bind these 
for disparate forces together is what makes Gordrax so potent. And so let's look back a little bit and talk about why is this cool? Well, if you've watched this channel, you know I've said this quite a few times. In horde armies, leaders define the faction, right? This is an exceptional case of that where um, there are typically just a handful of heroes, but a lot of dudes, right? Let's say a lot of art boys, a lot of brutes, a lot of core grunters, they have everything. But it's just taking a moment to really dive into the hero and how they, what they value, sets the tone for everything below them. The fact that he has a lot of mega bosses that also are based upon their cunning is going to trickle down to everybody. And I think that that is all is super unique. And with that, I like the focus on the cunning aspects. There's, I mean, in the Iron Jaws, oh, sorry, the War Clans book, I should say, because it includes bone splitters, there's a lot of focus on brutality and strength. But when they take a moment to be like, you know, this is this is what cunning looks like in context. He came up with a plan based on the clues around him that is no less brutal, because yeah, he still has to be mighty and strong to get the Maw Crusher to, you know, submit to him. But it, it, it involved you know, this little bit of, I don't know, a little bit of machinations, if you want. I thought that, that was really cool. The scene of him putting the, the dead Gargan's earwax in his ear made me squirm a little bit. I thought that was really, really a great way to do it. Um, I, I don't know. I, I guess I'd never thought of like, why, how come a Gargan wouldn't be affected by the bellows? But yeah, I guess that's the one way to do it. I thought that was really funny. And so I just want to ask, what is your favorite part of talking about the Iron Sons? I mean, for any, and you can kind of include anything. For me, honestly, I think the color scheme is extremely striking, right? The yellow on green looks absolutely fantastic. Um, I I don't know how I would specifically model Drakpad. There's not a lot of physical clues given to him, but if you have a Iron Suns army, I'd love to know it, what, what kind of stuff you would do or have done to make Drakpad stand out as unique. Because he, if you're building him, he, he is just a mega boss on a Maw Crusher, but obviously you kind of want that model to be something cool. So let me know in the comments down below what you guys have done. Thank you all so much for watching, and happy wargaming.